Houston and the world mourn the death of our First Lady, Barbara Bush. I've been the luckiest woman in the world, truthfully. Decades of service to her country and her community, a lifelong commitment to family, and her beloved husband of more than 70 years remembered tonight. They loved each other, they laughed together, they cried together, they carried burdens together. Love and support pouring in from across the globe as Houstonians come together to celebrate Barbara Bush's life and legacy. Really dedicated her public life to our kids and to education. An incredible, iconic Houstonian. At the end of your life, you will never regret not having passed one more test, winning one more verdict, or not closing one more deal. You will regret time not spent with a husband, a child, a friend, or a parent. Thank you so much for joining us on this sad evening. I'm Bill Bayasa. Hello, I'm Dominique Soxa. As we mourn Houston's First Lady, tonight we are getting an answer to a question that so many of you have been asking. How is her husband, former President George H.W. Bush, doing? In a statement, Bush family spokesman Jim McGrath said, President Bush is heartbroken to lose his beloved Barbara and that he held her hand all day today and was by her side when she passed. McGrath goes on to say that the former president is being stoic and strong and is being lifted up by his large and supportive family. Tonight we remember a remarkable woman who left a lasting legacy not only in Houston but all around the world. Our special coverage begins with Channel 2's Phil Archer. We're at Fuzzy's Pizza. This is where she and the president often dine together, a simple setting for the matriarch of a political dynasty, married to one president, the mother of another, descended from a third. With her trademark pearls and snow white hair, she endeared herself to Americans and Houstonians as first lady and as a neighbor. She was born Barbara Pierce in 1925 in Flushing, New York the third child of Marvin Pierce, scion of a publishing empire, and the descendant of Franklin Pierce, the 14th president of the United States. In 1941, she met George Poppy Bush at a Christmas dance. It was love at first sight. I could hardly breathe. I thought he was so beautiful. They were married for 73 years. The couple became engaged just before George Bush went to war in the Pacific. On his return, the couple married. They had six children. Their second child, Robin, died from leukemia at age three. I was combing her hair and holding her hand. I saw that little body. I saw her spirit go. She said she often fell apart after that, but her husband would put her back together. Supporting his career, they moved 29 times to West Texas, where George Bush started an oil company. Then, as a political wife, caring for their children while her husband's career often kept him away from home. President Bush would be the first to tell you that he could not have done any of this without her. As the wife of a vice president, then as first lady, she promoted literacy, believed it was the cure to most societal ills. She established the Barbara Bush Foundation for Family Literacy. She also wrote two books and had five schools named after her. I think people will remember her because of her passion, uh, her commitment, her commitment to service and service to others. Barbara Pierce Bush, gone at age 92. Over the next few days, her friends, her admirers, the world will mourn her loss and remember her accomplishments. Mrs. Bush's funeral is scheduled for Saturday. Reporting live in Southwest Houston, I'm Phil Archer, KPRC Channel 2 News. Thank you for that beautiful reporting, Phil.